Action Adventure and Beautiful Pinup Girls, all on Comic Pop. Hello everybody and welcome to Off the Rack, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. The comic book review show where we take a book and then break it down by the art and the writing and let you know what we thought about it. Today's episode is DC Bombshells number one. This is of course written by Marguerite Bennett with art by Marguerite Savage. So what were your initial thoughts of DC Comics Bombshells number one? This is a fun book. I like it. This was one of my favorite Wonder Woman stories in a long time. You mean because she's really badass? Well, she's always badass, but I get it. Like, I get the character now. I loved how they really tied into, like, you understand, like, the side effects of your war that's having on our people. Yes. I think it's just tying Wonder Woman's origin in with World War II, which they've done before. Uh, That actually makes it work really well. Of course you loved it. I loved it! Are you kidding me? It's like, it's like, I loved A League of Their Own. (laughs) And that's this, what this is. This is like superhero league of their own. Like, are you kidding me? This is awesome. Like, way to go to from taking a concept of like drawing these women as pinups in yeah. like an overly sexualized manner. I, again, I dig it. So I'm not commenting on that. And then making it into an amazingly cool story about super strong, like really like powerful, like not only like physically. But, like, mentally and emotionally women, like, in this, like, time period where that was, like, this accepted ideology. and not accepted all at the same yeah. time. Like, yeah! Uh, what would you guys think of the writing for this book, particularly? The writing was really fun. Uh, my favorite part of it was when we were going over Supergirl's uh, backstory. Mm. That was my favorite part of the book. Uh, I also thought the writing was great. I thought that the characters all had their own unique voices. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that the the it did a nice juggling act of origins and character, and also tying them all together, making one cohesive story out of it. Uh, because I was like DC bombshells, and you look at them, and they're all very disparate looking characters, and they all come from different backgrounds, and you're like, this is going to be hard to do. Uh, it was not, uh, or at least it seemed effortless. Well, yeah, because they used uh, they used World War II. Like you use something like that, it's really easy to bring everybody in. To something like that, and yeah. it makes it not feel forced. Um, I thought the writing was really spectacular, like really spectacular. Like it had a really good blend of using like colloquialisms from the time, yep, but not doing it in so uh, like an overzealous manner where you were like, "Oh my god, could you stop? I get it. Yeah, like I get it. Like no, they just they kept a really like good balance in yeah. my opinion. I agree. Yeah, really awesome. But I mean, like I love. Bennett's writing, mm-hmm. so if yeah. she messed this up, I would have been like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to shout out my favorite uh, character slash story in this has to be Batwoman. Yes! Thank while you! I you really just, you loved, took that away from me. While, while I loved Wonder Woman's inclusion and use in the character, I just really dug what they do with Batwoman. The stuff I loved about the Supergirl background is just because I didn't realize it was going to be taking place in Russia. It doesn't matter what side of the fight that you're on, like, in terms of what country you're from, as long as you're against Germany yeah. and the <laughs> right, Axis exactly. uh, war machine. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, so they're going to be, that's why there's not this whole, like, conjoined effort between, like, with Wonder Woman and with Batwoman and with Supergirl, Supergirl yeah. why they're not already syncing up. Right. Because they're from different countries. Makes yeah. sense. I, uh, I loved the fact that, this is totally different, but, like, with the Wonder Woman story, that's basically her origin. Like, in every incarnation of Wonder Woman, it's Wonder Woman's on this island, there's this guy named Steve Trevor, he's flying a plane, he's doing it for the military, for the American military, he gets shot down, the Amazonians want to kill him, she doesn't. Like, that's, we get, and, you know, and because of his uh, involvement in Themyscira and in, like, Amazonian affairs, it pulls them into man's world, and it makes Wonder Woman curious and interested in, like, dealing with that. Whoa, whoa, be a little progressive here. Not man's world. No, well, it, it, our in 1942 it is. Uh, yeah. Even today it's a little bit more man's world. But like, the idea of that is explored in every incarnation of Wonder Woman whenever they try to retell her origin. Uh, up to and including that really cool Wonder Woman animated movie from DC, which I really, really dug. See, I never knew this background for Well, that's the thing. They don't really like tout it very often because it's so very cemented in like, America has to usually be involved in some kind of war. You know, it's not like, oh, we're doing a training exercise in this impossible to chart area of the ocean. Right. Like, this, that, that doesn't happen. So, uh, it, but I, I love that inclusion, and I think her origin really works for that time period. It really sucks that, like, you could probably retell it today, but I feel like it works best in this. I like that they included eagles. 
Yes, they like rode eagles, which is like, pretty friggin' awesome. Like, she has that as a part of her... In her costume. Yeah, and I'm sure part of that was originally designed as a American, American thing, yeah. but that wouldn't make any sense for an Amazonian, but whatever. But putting that in there, like, loops it all around, and the fact that each of the women are wearing a Wonder Woman-esque, yes. ar- like, armored-based top, mm-hmm. I was like... I like this. Right. Oh, all of a sudden, it doesn't seem so bizarre. Right. Yeah, it all just fits together. She just happens to wear the red one. Yeah, it's almost like Marguerite Bennett's like, I'm going to make Wonder Woman relevant in this seemingly innocuous book. Well, it's just like, and like, this is going on to the art, but like, um, other Marguerite... Yeah. (laughs) Marguerite Sauvage. 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 Um, just really paid attention to these details. Like, in a few panels of the Wonder Woman story, she manages to, like, link together what will inevitably become, like, the Wonder Woman costume. Yes. To make it not American-based as Mm -hmm. much as it is now Amazonian-based. Right. And I think that that's just, that's just skillful, like, storytelling through art. Agreed. You mentioned uh, the art. Let's talk about that a little bit. I thought that the art was fantastic. I expected it to be reminiscent of Aunt Lucia's art, and he draws the covers, Aunt does the... uh, the calendars mm-hmm. of the DC bombshells. We own the calendar. Yep. Uh, and I actually, we actually own a print done by Mr. Lucia, and uh, it's not DC inspired Star Wars, but it's still awesome. And I was like, "Is Lucia going to draw this book?" When I originally like mm-hmm. heard about the pitch, um, he doesn't. But I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Um, any artist will tell you that like there's a difference between doing. A static cover image yep. and laying out panels. And, and most artists are big enough to realize whether they have a skill in doing one or the other. And I'm guessing he was like, that's not where I'm at. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm, like, I can that's do not what I do. Yeah. Um, and I know there are a lot of people who are like, I can't believe you didn't do it. But I I think this, this art is beautiful. I'm so glad that Savage did this. It's, um, what I like about the art overall is that in and of itself it has a certain, like, I hate to say it, but it has like a little bit of feminine quality to it, but there's incredible strength behind it, so I think it pairs beautifully with the tone of the story. I think it has to do a lot with the colors, too. Was Marguerite Sauvage also the colorist for this? Because that was what really stood out for me. She did the whole thing. That's really great. I liked it because the, the coloring also shifts between the women and their stories. You know, like, uh, some of the, one of the things you like to point out, Tiffany, was the, is with respect to, like, Old Man Logan and Secret Wars, like, where the color will usually be like a harbinger for action Mm -hmm. and hers whenever there's red typically it means there's it's either to highlight an action sequence or to imply there is one to come oh absolutely i really dug um in the batwoman story the first page where we have batwoman saving young bruce wayne yeah from becoming batman how it's completely black and white as a memory, but any of the hints of red that she has her hair her uniform is that red um, I just, I like yeah, the that. same action red. Yeah, that same action red. Well, she's all action. Right. That broad is all action. <laughs> I love the fact that they have to wear the, ma- oh, I just, just love it. But the coloring overall, and like, I think part of the reason that you guys are digging on it so much is the cohesion. Yes. Again, like, as much as I totally understand when an artist, like, has a colorist, because it's like, it takes a lot to, to put all of those together, do the art, the inking, the, the coloring, all yeah. that. But when a single artist can do that and is skilled at it, there, it's, that person knows exactly what they wanted to do. They know the feel of it. They know how it should be. Um, and it, that's the book is just cohesive. It's cohesive all the way through. It is just, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. And like, what I love about her women, the way she draws them, is again, because I know we're doing a bombshells, they're all stunning. Right. <laughs> they have these beautiful faces. And, and like, it is the 40s, so it makes sense for them to have the makeup completely done constantly, the hair done completely constantly, but like their body types are very realistic, yeah. and they and you can see like Batwoman, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, their strength in the way that the figure is drawn. When yeah. We meet Amanda Waller. She's not ideal, but she's still a bombshell. Yeah, in a, in, in and Absolutely. of itself. Um, and I, I just I really admire that. Totally. There you have it, everybody. DC Bombshells number one. I think it's all I recommend from us. Definitely pick it up in your local comic book store or online. You can see it there. And we'll see you guys next time with an all-new Off the Rack. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading, and we'll see you next time. And my favorite was Batwoman, more so than Sal. Yeah, it's fine.